What is up guys it's the real deal welcome back to the channel guys today we're going to be taking on amos the lunar archon so this is the team we're rolling with we got mithrala python uh, uko venomage and valkyrie um and you can see there's quite a few red stars you don't need that many um ideally you just need three red stars on mithrala and that will be more than enough um, it's just so she can land smite and you know the more smites you land the more damage you do the faster you'll speed up the run uh, python i guess it's good to have sort of two stars on him just for healing um, or a bit of more survivability really but um yeah that's all you need and let's just have a look we are number one in the clan and i've got some real beasts in the clan um so humble flex right there but yeah feels good man um yeah not easy you know, it's rare that I ever get to be number one in anything in my clan with all these god tier players. So let's do the run. Um, I'll talk you through like how you play this is very, very specific. So we're going to open with the A1 on Uko and we need to land that decrease attack. This is going to force the boss to open up with the A3. So this will remove any block buffs and replace it with block debuffs. Um, it will change decrease attack to increase attack. Heal reduction to continuous heal. That's the most annoying one. He will literally, you could have him down to like 25% HP and he will just heal all the way back up. So that's really important. And it will also change weaken to strengthen. Then he's going to throw out a stun debuff. Um, also, it fills um, Amethyst Term Eater by 10% for each debuff converted into a buff. Uh, that's We don't need to worry about that too much. So... Because he's going to throw out a stun now, we need to block that with um, Pythion's A2. Then we're going to do A1 um, from Venomage. Block the stun. A1 from Mithrala. Uh, with Valkyrie, basically, whenever whenever, whenever her A2 is up, we want to open up with that. It's going to put a shield on us, which is going to help survivability in this form. And then it's also going to give us counter attacks as well. We're going to counterattack with, sorry, um, A1 with Uko. It's a lot of uh, spamming A1s in this fight. So now that A3 is up, uh, sorry, on cooldown, he's going to use his A2. We need to throw out the heal reduction. So if we have a look at the A2, attacks of enemies before attacking increases the duration of all buffs and decreases, uh, sorry, decreases the duration of all buffs by one turn. Heals Amos by 20% of his max HP. The healing is increased by 5% for each buff that has its duration increase. That is huge. Um, so if he does have buffs on him after doing the A3, we need to strip them with Uko. And then he's going to fill his time ER by 10% for each debuff that has its duration decreased. There's, we can't do anything about that. Don't worry about it. Uh, and then it's just a case of spamming the A1s again. So now that, you know, the boss has done his A3 and A2, we now need to keep an eye on his passive. So if we look over here at this red circle, there's a one on it. Um, that means that it'll be, it'll, you'll see it on two. Now it's going to be on one. So on one means this turn, he's going to change forms. And to be fair, we don't really need to worry about too much in the other form. We're just going to literally be spamming A1s. He does do some different things. Um, in this form but because we're just spamming a1s we don't need to worry about the boss too much it's only if you have like a couple of buffs on you or something he'll start using his a3 and a2 so a3 will basically re uh, remove any block debuffs on us and then replace them with block buffs um increase attack will be changed to decrease attack if we put like um like increased defense he will change that to decrease defense so it makes us really squishy so you want to avoid that um, and if we do have like um, heals on us, he's going to put heal reduction on us. Um, so yeah, be, need to be careful with that. Then he places a sleep. So basically you will miss a turn. And then he'll open up the A2. Um, we'll attack all enemies and basically increase all the duration of debuffs on us and decrease uh, all buffs on us as well. And he just basically just... It, what's good about this is when he does the A3 and the A2, it doesn't do a lot of damage. So it's quite easy to survive. Um, but I'll show you in a second. Um, Valkyrie is going to be our target. So he's going to be hitting the Valkyrie. 
and he does hit pretty hard and he does go through shields as well so yeah here comes the a1 and it hits really really hard so now what we need to keep an eye on is the this buff here so it's on two when it's on one we need to make sure that we land decrease attack okay that could be an issue hopefully it's not we're gonna put block buffs on ourselves to protect us for when he switches forms okay so uko yes he landed it that was really really clutch and he's used the a3 we're gonna put out heal reduction again and now we just spam a1 and that's literally it so it it's kind of a it's kind of a complicated fight but you just need to keep an eye on the a3 and the at on his normal form and then just keep an eye on his passive and then he's going to switch forms and that's that's it and then we just spam a ones we just cycle back around again and again but yeah mithrala really does come in clutch uh, her poisons the smite it just does so much damage uh, some things that can be annoying though is that you may not you know there's always a three percent chance not to land a buff so venom age not landing that heal reduction is massive it can be real pain because then the boss will just heal up so much um and yeah there's a little bit of speed tuning in this fight but not too much and there's also HP tuning as well. So um, every champion has more than 60k HP apart from Valkyrie. And the reason for that is that she needs to have the lowest amount of HP. So she will always be targeted by the boss. And I did have to do some weird builds to get this all working. and yeah so python is in a guardian set that's going to help keep valkyrie alive um, and it is essential that she does not die during that form if she does die it gets a whole lot harder because the boss can start popping off every time he kills someone he'll start doing more damage and that's really really frustrating really really difficult to deal with we don't want to yeah you just you don't want to wipe on this nice and so the boss is getting a little bit low now. So you have to kill the boss in this form. And it looks like we are going to get a smooth run. And yeah, we're going to change forms again. So if you kill the boss in this form, he will revive. And that is a huge pain in the arse. Um, so frustrating like you know you just think oh yes i finally killed one of the hardest bosses in the game and then he just comes back and you and he goes i think it's about 50 percent hp and you just have to go through it all again so it's going to increase the time on your runs massively we just need to land a smite come on okay and ideally uko does need to land decrease attack nice and that's it boys i think we're pretty much there nice oh i didn't put out the block buffs from python okay hopefully that's not gonna mess things up too much there we go Woo. that's it guys game over man game over so 99 turns not bad at all and considering I did a lot of talking, that really did slow down the run. I reckon without talking, this would probably be like a five, six minute run. So yeah, pretty quick. Um, Mithrala doing 2.2 million damage. Um, she is doing, you know, she is almost completely carrying the damage, uh, the team with damage with her poisons and with the smite. Um, Uko is essential, um, you know, decrease attack and strip, really, really important. I mean, Uko can just be replaced by any decrease attack champions so Altan is a good uh, option um Krisk as well can be used as well um Pytheon you know they're here to cleanse and throw out block debuff so 
any champion can do that, but also another great option would be Elva. Um, Venomage can be replaced by Cold Heart, but you'd have to build your Cold Heart in a strange way. Lots of HP, um, decent amount of speed and accuracy, but it's all about just landing that heal reduction. And then Valkyrie, um, she's, you know, she's just there to tank it. She can be replaced by pretty much like loads of different champions, but again, the counter attacks are nice. It means that we get extra healing from Pythion. Um, and the shields are nice as well during the normal form, just giving us more survivability. And again, she's done a decent amount of damage, like 812k, not bad at all, and a little bit down from the smite as well. And Venomage as well, doing poison explosions, um, doing 620k. It's good. It, it all adds up. So we've done the run. Let's check out the gear and the masteries. First on the list, we've got Mithrala. And this is a really old school build, like sort of when she first came out. So she's in triple perception. Um, substats you want to be looking for are speed, accuracy, HP defense, uh, defense percentage, and also resistance. So we've got defense gloves with uh, subs in speed and accuracy. Um, a accuracy chest piece. Um, HP percentage on the boots. Nice triple roll in speed. Um, so... This is probably a terrible ring to most for to change it, but the only reason I put it in there is just because it's the only reaction gear that I had at the time. Um, but yeah, ideally you just have like a HP ring. That, that'd be a way better choice. Um, amulet, we've got HP. Again, the resistance and accuracy sub rolls. <laughs> a re like a five star banner, um, double rolls in speed and you know it's an accuracy banner. 65k HP, 3.5k defense, 247 speed, 262 resistance, and then 608 accuracy. Um, yeah, we gotta take Brimstone um, for this just because of the damage it's gonna do. And also she needs to be the lead to give the whole team that extra 80 accuracy to make sure we are landing all our debuffs. Masteries, very, very specific masteries for this. So we're going in the support tree and um, we want to take master hexa just to extend those poisons then on the left hand side it's all just basic stuff just you know taking damage life drinker to help top us up with hp if we do get low and then war master just to do more damage on the boss which is essential then we've got pythion who i had to completely rebuild for this so Gloves, we got HP percentage, got defense on the chest piece, speed on the boots, uh, HP on the ring, defense on the amulet, and then resistance on the banner. 66k HP, 3.8k defense, 263 uh, speed, and then 367 uh, resistance. So it's not the best build to be honest, um, you know, but I'm using her for Hydra. I'm sorry, I'm using him for Hydra. I'm using him for, for Amos now. So this is a build that works for both. Um, but yeah, if I was doing arena, obviously way more HP, a little bit more defense and probably the same amount of speed. And Lightning Cage, I'd probably change this blessing. Um, I was just using it for Hydra to tank the um, one of the heads. But yeah, for, for this boss, I guess it doesn't really matter, to be honest. Um, probably, yeah, I don't think there's anything that I would really take for this boss differently. It doesn't really matter the blessing. So these are the masteries that I'm rolling with. So, you know, we've got rejuvenation to re increase the amount of healing that we do. Uh, we're taking sort of anything that's going to give us survivability. Um, big one, delay on death really does help a lot. Selfless defender, so that means that we're gonna, you know, take a lot of the damage as well from from our teammates just to help them out as well. Uh, I do, I do need to go back to Minotaur and finish off farming up masteries. Uh, Retribution will help a lot, so that's gonna, you know, all those counter attacks with our A one, that's gonna give us loads of healing. So really, really important we do that. And again, going in the offense tree down to War Master just to do more damage on the boss and try and speed up the run. Oh, and we miss Valkyrie. So yeah, Valkyrie, this is such a strange build. Um, so <laughs> we've got her in a lifesteal and a broken set. 
Lifesteal is a great set in Valkyrie because she's always counter-attacking. She's always going to be healing herself up. So it is, it is a good gear set. Um, so we've got crit damage on the gloves, uh, defense on the chest piece, and we're just going for speed um, and crit rate and accuracy in the substats. And I'll explain in a moment why we need accuracy because everyone's going to be like, but she doesn't throw out debuffs. I'll explain in a moment. So defense boots, crit rate and speed again. Defense on the ring, crit damage on the amulet, and then an accuracy banner. Uh, 50k HP, 5.3k defense, really slow at 171 speed, um, crit capped, 240 crit damage, and then 390 accuracy. So the reason we need accuracy is so that we can land our brimstone, um, or so we can land smite with brimstone, because um, it obviously, if it doesn't, it's because otherwise, you know, if we were six star, we don't need to worry about accuracy, but because we're not, and it does help. So, you know, you need that accuracy to land it. it helps a lot. Um, but yeah, so that's the, and I mean, she does, you know, again, her passive can work for waves and stuff, but not for this boss. It doesn't matter for this boss. But yeah, that's the only reason we've got accuracy is just so we can land more brimstones. So, so we're going in the support tree. We're going to have bigger shields. Um, and anything that's going to increase our shield buffs, we're taking. Uh, everlasting, sorry, lasting gifts is going to increase our counter attacks and our shields. Um, and if anyone does die as well, we've got spirit haste as well. Again, offense tree, all the standard stuff, taking the crit rate, taking the crit damage, um, heart of glories, just anything that's going to help us do more damage to the boss. And then again, war master. It all it all helps. Every every little helps. So we're actually using my arena Uko, and I had to switch him up a little bit. Um, he's in a stun set, obviously for arena. Um, so he doesn't need you know doesn't need regen and stuff for this boss. Um, one thing I will say though is that you know I used to use Uko all the time in arena, but in live arena now, you know people have started using bolster sets to counter me. So. He's not as strong as he used to be for or, uh, for live arena anyway, but um, but yeah, it, the stats are more important for this boss anyway. So we've got attack gloves, but that's just because of the speed and accuracy. Ideally, those would be HP or defense. Got HP chest piece, uh, speed on the boots, HP on the ring, HP on the amulet, and then accuracy on the banner. Fifty five k HP. Maybe that should be a little bit higher just to make sure that we aren't the one tanking it. Um, 2.4k defense, um, 278 speed, so really, really fast. And then 384 accuracy. Um, this accuracy used to be a lot higher, but again, you know, I had to mess around just so I could do this boss. Um, yeah, again, blessings. I guess, you know, I'd probably change it to like crossing rend or... or cruelty yeah or cruelty so cruelty or or crossing wrens would be the ones that i take just to you know do some more damage obviously polymorph is not going to help us here at all and again masteries these are masteries for for arena so we've got fearsome presence just to try and you know land more stuns for arena but if you really wanted him to just be purely for amos and for hydra just copy sort of one of the other builds that I showed you earlier where, you know, we're doing crit rate, crit damage, going into War Masters, and I'd probably take defense with him. Uh, you should have enough accuracy to land. Your, if you don't, well, if you don't have enough accuracy, go in the support tree. If you've got enough accuracy, then go defense. Make sure we take Blast Proof and Rejuvenation. That's just going to help you with survivability in other content. And then we're going to scroll all the way down to Venomage. We're scrolling, 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 ow, scrolling, scrolling. So in Venomage, we had to go in a regen in Immortal. So I tried, I did have um, uh, Venomage in a solo build. Had to switch it up because she started tanking the, um, the solo hits on the Dark Form. 
So you've got HP gloves, again, subs we're looking for speed and accuracy, then HP percentage and defense percentage. Got HP on the chest piece, speed on the boots, uh, defense on the ring, defense on the amulet, and then accuracy on the banner. Total stats, 60k HP, 3.0, oh, 3k defense, 255 speed, and then 375 accuracy. We've got no blessings, but again, you know, crushing rend or or cruelty would be great options just to do some more damage. And masteries, these would be the masteries that you could use on Uko. Um, so you know, support tree. Um, and we'd make sure that we're taking Master Hexa. And so one thing I forgot to mention as well, you cannot bring in cooldown reduction for the boss. If there's any cooldown reduction, um, he can just start popping off. So Cycle of Magic is a big no-no. Do not take it. Otherwise, yeah, he can just start popping off and wiping your team. Then, you know, just standard stuff going on the offense tree. Again, into War Masters. So War Master on almost every single champion. Um, it really does make a huge, huge difference. So yeah, that is the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I've been The Real Deal. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll see you all in a video soon. Peace.